Heather Locklear's life took a dramatic turn following her high-profile divorce from Richie Sambora, the guitarist of Bon Jovi. Did you know that? Their tumultuous marriage, frequently in the media spotlight, triggered a cascade of struggles that deeply affected Heather Locklear's public persona and personal health. She once recounted the experience as being so devastating that it nearly led to her silent demise. To uncover the full extent of the divorce's adverse effects on Heather Locklear's life, don't miss this video. It is said that Richie Sambora caused the deepest trauma to Heather Locklear and her life changed completely after the divorce. However, Richie Sambora is not the only husband of Heather Locklear. Her first high-profile marriage was to Tommy Lee, the infamous drummer of Motley Crue, a union that seemed to embody the excess and wild spirit of the 1980s rock scene. The couple tied the knot on May 10, 1986, when both were at the peaks of their respective careers. Locklear, as a rising television star, known for her roles in Dynasty and T.J. Hooker, and Lee as a member of one of the most notorious rock bands of the time. Their marriage was the epitome of 80s glam, marked by the kind of extravagant lifestyle that often accompanies fame in the entertainment industry. Locklear and Lee's relationship was, in many ways, a whirlwind of passion and drama, a staple of Hollywood gossip columns. Despite the external appearance of a rock-solid bond, their marriage was fraught with challenges not least of which was the demanding nature of their careers and Lee's notorious bad boy image. The pressures of life in the public eye, coupled with the intense demands of maintaining a relationship in the limelight, ultimately led to their divorce in 1993. Although the reasons behind their split were never fully disclosed, it was widely speculated that Lee's lifestyle and infidelity played a significant role. Their seven-year marriage was a roller coaster, reflective of the fast-paced, high-octane environment in which they both thrived. Following her divorce from Lee, Locklear found love again with Richie Sambora, the guitarist for Bon Jovi, another rock icon of the era. Their relationship began in a much more subdued manner than her previous marriage, perhaps reflecting Locklear's desire for a more stable and grounded partnership. They were married on December 17, 1994, in a romantic ceremony in Paris, a city synonymous with love and romance, signifying a fresh start for Locklear. The marriage between Locklear and Sambora seemed, at least initially, to be a more conventional and stable union. The couple welcomed their daughter, Ava Elizabeth Sambora, on October 4, 1997, a moment that marked a new chapter in Locklear's life. Motherhood appeared to bring her immense joy and a sense of fulfillment, and Ava quickly became the center of her world. Despite the initial bliss, the marriage between Locklear and Sambora began to unravel in the mid-2000s. In February 2006, Locklear filed for divorce, a move that stunned many given the couple's seemingly solid relationship. The reasons behind the divorce were not fully disclosed to the public, but it was clear that the marriage had reached an irreparable point. The following month, Sambora filed for joint custody of their daughter and sought the enforcement of their prenuptial agreement, indicating that the divorce might not be entirely amicable. Their divorce was finalized in April 2007, bringing to an end over a decade of marriage. Despite the split, Locklear and Sambora remained committed to co-parenting their daughter, striving to provide a sense of normalcy for Ava amidst the upheaval. However, as mentioned, this divorce almost completely ruined Heather Locklear's life. The events surrounding the 911 call made in March 2008 involving Heather Locklear provide a window into the complex interplay between public perception, media scrutiny, and the personal struggles faced by celebrities. This incident, which was initially reported as a potential attempt, reflects the intense pressure Locklear was under during that time, as well as the challenges of living a life in the public eye. In March 2008, a 911 call was made by someone who claimed to be Heather Locklear's doctor, expressing concern that the actress was attempting to harm herself. This alarming report triggered a swift response from emergency services, 
who were dispatched to Locklear's home in the affluent neighborhood of Westlake Village, California. Westlake Village, known for its tranquility and seclusion, is a place where many celebrities seek refuge from the relentless demands of fame. However, even in such a serene setting, the burdens of public life can become overwhelming. The fact that the call originated from someone purporting to be Locklear's doctor added credibility and urgency to the situation. Typically, medical professionals are trusted sources in matters concerning health and well-being, so the seriousness of the call was immediately recognized by the Ventura County Sheriff's Department. The mention of a potential suicide attempt involving a well-known figure like Locklear, who was beloved for her roles in iconic television series such as Melrose Place and Spin City, was enough to make headlines across the country. Upon arriving at Locklear's residence, emergency responders and the sheriff's department were prepared for the worst. However, they were met with a situation that starkly contrasted the distressing nature of the 911 call. Locklear appeared to be in good health, both physically and emotionally, according to the authorities on the scene. The Ventura County Sheriff's Department later stated that no further action was necessary, as Locklear seemed to be fine and showed no signs of distress or intent to harm herself. This discrepancy between the initial report and the reality on the ground sparked a wave of speculation and rumors. The publicist for Locklear quickly moved to address the situation, stating that the actress had never requested any medical assistance. This statement was an attempt to quell the media frenzy and reassure Locklear's fans and the public that she was not in any immediate danger. The publicist's remarks also subtly suggested that the situation had been blown out of proportion, a narrative often seen in cases where celebrities are involved in such incidents. However, despite the reassurances, the incident raised questions about Locklear's well-being. The fact that someone claiming to be her doctor felt compelled to make such a call indicated that there might have been underlying concerns about her mental health. This period in Locklear's life was marked by personal challenges, including struggles with anxiety and depression, which had been reported in the media prior to the incident. These struggles, compounded by the pressures of maintaining a public image, likely contributed to the perception that she was in a vulnerable state. The Ventura County Sheriff's Department's decision to consider the call as genuine, even after finding Locklear in a stable condition, highlights the complexity of assessing mental health crises, especially in high-profile individuals. The department's cautious approach, treating the call seriously despite the eventual outcome, underscores the importance of erring on the side of caution when dealing with potential threats to someone's life. The summer of 2008 marked a significant period in Heather Locklear's life as she sought help for her psychological struggles, underscoring the challenges of managing mental health in the public eye. On June 24, 2008, Locklear made the courageous decision to check into a medical facility in Arizona, seeking treatment for anxiety and depression. This move came after months of speculation about her mental well-being, following a series of public incidents that hinted at deeper issues. The decision to seek professional help was a pivotal moment for Locklear, as it represented a turning point in her journey toward recovery and stability. Locklear's decision to enter a treatment facility was not made lightly. As a beloved actress known for her roles in popular television shows like Melrose Place and Dynasty, she had spent much of her career in the spotlight. However, the pressures of fame, coupled with personal struggles, had taken a toll on her mental health. By mid-2008, it was clear that Locklear needed a more comprehensive approach to managing her anxiety and depression, prompting her to seek an in-depth evaluation of her condition. The facility in Arizona, where Locklear sought treatment, was known for its specialized programs in mental health and addiction recovery. This choice reflected Locklear's commitment to addressing her issues head-on, as the facility offered a serene and private environment conducive to healing.
The decision to enter such a facility also signified a recognition of the complexity of her condition, as she sought not only to manage her symptoms, but also to gain a better understanding of the underlying factors contributing to her mental health challenges. Locklear's agent played a crucial role in communicating her situation to the public, confirming that the actress was indeed suffering from anxiety and depression. This confirmation was significant as it provided a level of transparency about Locklear's condition that helped to counteract the often sensationalized media coverage surrounding her struggles. By acknowledging her mental health issues, Locklear and her team aimed to destigmatize the conversation around anxiety and depression, particularly in the context of a high profile individual. The media's response to Locklear's decision to seek treatment was mixed. On one hand, there was an outpouring of support from fans and fellow celebrities who admired her bravery in confronting her mental health issues. On the other hand, the relentless scrutiny that comes with being a public figure meant that Locklear's personal struggles were dissected in the public sphere, often with little regard for her privacy. The media coverage of her time in treatment highlighted the ongoing challenges faced by celebrities in maintaining a sense of personal agency while navigating the pressures of public life. During her four-week stay at the Arizona facility, Locklear underwent a thorough evaluation of her medication regimen. This aspect of her treatment was particularly important, as it underscored the complexities involved in finding the right balance of medication to effectively manage anxiety and depression. The process of adjusting medications can be challenging, requiring careful monitoring and collaboration between the patient and medical professionals. Locklear's willingness to undergo this evaluation demonstrated her commitment to her recovery and her desire to achieve a more stable and healthy mental state. Locklear's treatment in Arizona was not just about managing her symptoms, but also about gaining a deeper understanding of herself and the factors contributing to her mental health struggles. The facility's approach likely involved a combination of therapy, counseling, and other therapeutic activities designed to help patients explore the root causes of their anxiety and depression. This holistic approach was essential in providing Locklear with the tools she needed to cope with her condition in a more sustainable way. On July 23, 2008, Locklear returned home after completing her four-week treatment program. Her return marked the beginning of a new chapter in her life, one in which she was better equipped to manage her mental health. The transition from the structured environment of the treatment facility back to her daily life was undoubtedly challenging, but Locklear's decision to seek help had set her on a path toward recovery. The events of September 2008 marked another tumultuous chapter in Heather Locklear's life as she found herself at the center of a highly publicized legal and media ordeal. On that day, Locklear was pulled over by a California Highway Patrol officer and arrested on suspicion of driving under the influence, DUI, just outside Santa Barbara. The arrest came after she was seen driving erratically, a concerning sight for anyone on the road, but especially for someone as high-profile as Locklear, whose every move was often scrutinized by both the public and the media. The incident that led to Locklear's arrest began when she was spotted by Jill Ishkanian, a former reporter and editor at Us Weekly magazine. Ishkanian claimed to have encountered Locklear by chance outside a market in Montecito, California, a picturesque and affluent community known for its celebrity residence and tranquil surroundings. According to Ishkanian, she noticed Locklear behaving unusually and decided to take photographs of the actress, capturing what would become a significant moment in Locklear's ongoing personal struggles. The circumstances of Ishkanian's encounter with Locklear have been the subject of much debate and controversy. While Ishkanian maintains that her meeting with Locklear was purely coincidental, the sequence of events that followed has led many to question whether it was indeed a chance occurrence or something more calculated. Ishkanian took the photographs she had captured of Locklear's erratic behavior and sold them to the celebrity news website TMZ.com for $27,500, a sum that, when adjusted for inflation, would be equivalent to approximately $38,117 in 
in 2023. TMZ, known for its relentless coverage of celebrity news and scandals, quickly published the photos, and the story of Locklear's arrest spread like wildfire. The images and the story behind them dominated headlines, feeding the public's insatiable appetite for celebrity gossip and further intensifying the scrutiny on Locklear's personal life. The narrative that emerged from this incident painted a picture of a troubled star, struggling to maintain control in the face of overwhelming pressures. Locklear's arrest on suspicion of DUI added another layer to her already complex public persona. Just a few months earlier, she had checked into a medical facility in Arizona to seek treatment for anxiety and depression. Her decision to seek help had been met with both support and curiosity, as fans and the media speculated about the extent of her struggles. The DUI arrest seemed to confirm the worst fears about Locklear's state of mind, suggesting that her road to recovery was far from straightforward. However, the details surrounding the arrest raised questions about the fairness and ethics of how the situation was handled, particularly with regard to Ishkanian's involvement. While Ishkanian insisted that she had not followed or set up Locklear to obtain the photographs, the fact that she was able to profit from the incident by selling the images to TMZ led to accusations of exploitation. Critics argued that the former journalist had taken advantage of Locklear's vulnerability, turning a moment of personal crisis into a commodity to be bought and sold. Heather Locklear's legal troubles reached a critical juncture on November 17, 2008, when she was formally charged with one misdemeanor count of driving under the influence. DUI. This charge stemmed from an incident in September of the same year when Locklear was arrested near Santa Barbara after being observed driving erratically. The charge marked a significant moment in Locklear's ongoing struggles with mental health and its impact on her public and private life, further intensifying the media spotlight on the actress during a turbulent period. The circumstances surrounding Locklear's arrest were unusual in that her blood tests did not reveal any alcohol or illegal narcotics in her system. This finding complicated the narrative that typically accompanies DUI charges, where alcohol or illicit drugs are usually implicated. Instead, the case against Locklear hinged on the assertion that the prescription medications she was taking for anxiety and depression had impaired her ability to drive safely. Santa Barbara County Deputy District Attorney Lee Carter stated that authorities believed the medications, which were legally prescribed, could have impaired her ability to safely drive a motor vehicle. This aspect of the case highlighted the complex relationship between prescription medication and legal responsibility, particularly in situations where the medications are intended to treat serious mental health conditions. For Locklear, who had been open about her struggles with anxiety and depression, the charge underscored the difficulties in managing these conditions while also navigating the demands of everyday life. It also raised broader questions about how the legal system handles cases involving prescription drugs, especially when they are being used as part of a legitimate medical treatment plan. The fact that no illegal substances were found in Locklear's system did not diminish the seriousness of the charge, but it did shift the focus to the effects of her prescribed medications. The medications in question were likely intended to stabilize her mood and alleviate the symptoms of anxiety and depression, but their side effects could include drowsiness, slowed reaction times, and impaired judgment, all of which are critical factors when driving. The prosecution's case was built on the premise that, even though Locklear had not consumed alcohol or illegal drugs, the medications she was taking could still render her unfit to operate a vehicle safely. On January 2, 2009, Locklear appeared in court and pleaded no contest to a lesser charge of reckless driving. In legal terms, a no-contest plea means that the defendant does not admit guilt but also does not dispute the charges. This plea is often used as part of a plea bargain, allowing the defendant to avoid a trial and potentially harsher penalties. For Locklear, this plea deal was a strategic decision that allowed her to avoid the more serious consequences associated with a DUI conviction. In exchange for her no-contest plea, 
the district attorney's office agreed to dismiss the DUI charges. This resolution was likely a relief for Locklear, as a DUI conviction could have had more severe repercussions, both legally and personally. Instead, she was sentenced to three years of informal probation, which did not require regular check-ins with a probation officer, but did require her to stay out of legal trouble for the duration of the probation period. Additionally, Locklear was ordered to attend a DMV driver safety class and pay a $700 fine. The events of January 12, 2012, were a stark reminder of the ongoing challenges Heather Locklear faced with her mental health and personal well-being. On that day, a 911 call made by Locklear's sister highlighted the deep concern within her family for the actress's safety. The call was prompted by fears that Locklear had placed herself in significant danger after reportedly consuming a combination of prescription drugs and alcohol. This alarming incident brought to the forefront the fragile state Locklear was in at the time and the lengths to which her family was willing to go to ensure her safety. Locklear's sister acted swiftly, recognizing the potential severity of the situation. The decision to contact emergency services is never taken lightly, especially when it involves a loved one. In this case, Locklear's sister made the difficult but necessary choice to seek immediate help, fearing that her sister's life might be at risk. The gravity of the situation was underscored by the urgency with which emergency personnel responded, arriving at Locklear's home in Thousand Oaks, California, with the knowledge that they were dealing with a potentially life-threatening scenario. Upon arrival, the emergency responders assessed the situation and determined that Locklear needed to be taken to the hospital for further evaluation and treatment. She was transported to Los Robles Hospital in Thousand Oaks, a facility known for its comprehensive medical care. The decision to hospitalize Locklear was a precautionary measure, reflecting the seriousness with which her condition was treated by both her family and the medical professionals involved. The reports that emerged in the hours following Locklear's hospitalization painted a picture of a woman struggling with the dangerous combination of prescription medication and alcohol. This combination is known to be potentially lethal, as the depressant effects of both substances can amplify each other, leading to respiratory failure, unconsciousness, or worse. In Locklear's case, the prompt intervention by her sister and the quick response by emergency personnel likely played a crucial role in averting a more tragic outcome. In February 2018, Heather Locklear faced another significant and troubling incident when she was arrested for domestic violence and battery against a police officer. This event marked a deepening of the challenges Locklear had been experiencing in her personal life, and it brought renewed attention to the struggles she had been facing for years. The incident began at Locklear's home in Thousand Oaks, California. According to reports, the situation escalated to the point where Locklear's brother felt compelled to call the police after arriving at her home and finding her in the midst of a heated argument with her boyfriend, Chris Heiser, a former American Motorcycle Association motocross racer. The nature of the argument was severe enough that Locklear's brother feared for her safety, leading him to involve law enforcement. This decision set in motion a series of events that would culminate in Locklear's arrest and subsequent legal battles. When the deputies arrived at Locklear's home, the situation quickly spiraled out of control. Locklear, who was already in an agitated state, reportedly became violent towards the officers. She allegedly kicked three of the arresting sheriff's deputies, a serious act of aggression that led to her being charged with three misdemeanor counts of battery on a police officer. The confrontation didn't end there. Locklear reportedly told the deputies that she would shoot them if they ever entered her home again, a threat that underscored the severity of her emotional and psychological state at that time. The charges against Locklear were serious. In addition to the three misdemeanor counts of battery on a police officer, she was also charged with one felony count of domestic violence. This charge was particularly significant as it suggested that the argument with Heiser had escalated to physical violence. 
The felony count carried the potential for severe legal consequences, including jail time, and it reflected the gravity with which the authorities viewed the incident. Locklear was taken into custody, but she did not remain there for long. She was released on a $20,000 bond just before 6 a.m. the following day, a fact that highlighted the complexities of her situation. The swift posting of bond allowed her to avoid prolonged detention, but it also meant that she was quickly back in the public eye, where her every move was scrutinized. The media coverage of Locklear's arrest was intense, with details of the incident dominating headlines. The public was captivated by the story of the once-beloved actress who had fallen from grace, and the narrative of Locklear as a troubled figure struggling with personal demons was further solidified. The incident in February 2018 was not just a legal issue, but also a deeply personal crisis, one that played out on a very public stage. The story took an even more complex turn when, just hours after Locklear was taken into custody, her boyfriend Chris Heiser was also arrested. Heiser was charged with driving under the influence in Thousand Oaks, adding another layer to the already convoluted situation. The timing of Heiser's arrest suggested that the couple's issues were not confined to the walls of Locklear's home, but were part of a broader pattern of behavior that had serious legal and personal implications. The involvement of both Locklear and Heiser in legal troubles on the same night painted a picture of a relationship marked by turmoil and instability. For Locklear, the events of that night were a culmination of years of struggle, and they highlighted the difficulties she faced in maintaining control over her life. The charges against her, particularly the felony count of domestic violence, were a stark reminder of how far things had deteriorated. In the days following her arrest, the situation grew more complicated when authorities obtained a warrant to search Locklear's home. The search, conducted on March 12th, was reportedly in response to the threats Locklear had made against the deputies during her arrest. Law enforcement officials were looking for a weapon, fearing that Locklear might be in possession of a firearm that could be used to carry out the threats she had made. However, the search yielded no weapons, a fact that may have provided some relief, but did little to alleviate the overall seriousness of the situation. Locklear's arrest on June 24th was the culmination of a series of increasingly alarming incidents that had taken place in the months leading up to it. The specifics of what triggered the June 24th incident remain somewhat unclear, but it was serious enough to warrant law enforcement's involvement. The charges, two misdemeanor counts of battery, suggest that Locklear had once again engaged in physical altercations, this time resulting in legal action. The recurrence of such incidents pointed to an escalating pattern of behavior that was becoming more difficult to manage, both for Locklear and those around her. The arrest on June 24th was not just another legal setback. It was also a significant emotional and psychological blow for Locklear. Having already faced public scrutiny for previous arrests, including one earlier in the year for domestic violence and battery against police officers, this new incident further eroded her public image. It also underscored the ongoing battle she was waging against her personal demons, a battle that was increasingly playing out in the public eye. Following her arrest, Locklear was released on bail on June 25th. However, the relief of being out on bail was short-lived, as the very next day she was hospitalized in what was suspected to be a case of overdose. This hospitalization added a new layer of urgency to Locklear's situation, highlighting the severe mental health and substance abuse issues she was facing. The timing of the overdose, coming so soon after her release on bail, suggested a deep sense of despair and hopelessness, as well as the possibility that she was struggling with an overwhelming sense of guilt or shame related to her actions. The suspected overdose was a stark reminder of the dangers inherent in Locklear's situation. The combination of legal troubles, substance use, and mental health issues created a volatile mix that could easily have resulted in a tragic outcome.
Fortunately, Locklear was hospitalized in time to receive the medical care she needed, but the incident served as a wake-up call for those around her. It became increasingly clear that Locklear needed more than just legal intervention. She needed comprehensive mental health support to address the underlying issues driving her behavior. In the months following the June 2018 arrest and hospitalization, Locklear's legal team worked to navigate the complexities of her case. The charges stemming from the June 24th arrest were serious, and Locklear faced the possibility of significant legal penalties if convicted. However, her history of mental health struggles and the suspected overdose that followed the arrest likely influenced the legal strategy employed by her defense team. The focus was likely on securing a resolution that would address Locklear's need for treatment rather than simply punishing her for the criminal charges. In August 2019, more than a year after the initial arrest, Locklear reached a resolution in her case. She pleaded no contest to the charges stemming from the June 2018 arrest. In legal terms, a no contest plea means that the defendant does not admit guilt, but also does not dispute the charges. This plea is often used as part of a plea agreement to avoid the uncertainties of a trial and to negotiate a more favorable sentence. For Locklear, the no-contest plea was likely a strategic decision that allowed her to avoid the potential consequences of a conviction while also acknowledging the need for accountability. The court's response to her plea was both punitive and rehabilitative. She was sentenced to 30 days in a residential mental health facility. This sentence reflected the court's recognition that Locklear's issues went beyond criminal behavior and required serious mental health intervention. In April 2020, Heather Locklear took to Instagram to share a deeply personal and significant milestone in her life. She had been sober for one year. This announcement was met with widespread support and admiration from her fans and the public, as it marked a moment of triumph in her long and arduous battle with addiction. The post was a testament to her resilience and determination to reclaim control over her life, particularly after years of very public struggles with substance abuse, legal issues, and mental health challenges. Locklear's journey to sobriety had been anything but easy. Over the years, she had faced numerous challenges, with her addiction issues often playing out in the public eye. By the time she announced her one-year sobriety milestone, Locklear had reportedly received treatment for addiction a staggering 20 times. This number alone underscores the severity and persistence of the battle she had been fighting, a battle that many never fully understand or appreciate. The significance of Locklear's one-year milestone cannot be overstated. For someone who had been in and out of treatment facilities numerous times, Reaching one year of sobriety was a major achievement. It signified not only her commitment to overcoming her addiction, but also her ability to maintain that commitment over an extended period. The post was likely intended to inspire others who might be facing similar struggles, demonstrating that recovery is possible even after many setbacks. The decision to share her sobriety milestone on Instagram was also indicative of the changing ways in which public figures manage their personal challenges in the age of social media. Locklear's post was both a personal statement and a public declaration of her progress. By sharing her journey with her followers, she was opening up about a deeply private aspect of her life in a very public forum. This openness may have been part of her healing process, allowing her to receive support and encouragement from fans and loved ones. However, despite the positive progress Locklear had made by April 2020, the specter of her past struggles continued to loom over her. Sobriety is a lifelong commitment, and for someone with a history as complex as Locklear's, maintaining that sobriety was likely an ongoing challenge. The reality of addiction is that it is often accompanied by relapses, and the fear of slipping back into old patterns can be a constant source of anxiety. This fear seemed to materialize in July 2023, when the New York Post published photos of Locklear that sparked widespread concern. The photos showed her behaving erratically and talking to herself in public, 
behaviors that were reminiscent of her previous struggles with substance abuse. The images led to speculation that Locklear might have relapsed and was possibly drinking alcohol again. What do you think about Heather Locklear's life after her divorce from Richie Sambora? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.